What's up everybody, Brian Myers here again on the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast YouTube channel. Today is a very special day. Um, this has been a uh, much requested vlog topic and uh, I'm finally going to give it to you. The elusive, very special tour of my playroom. That's right, it's a playroom, it's not a man cave, I'm not into that word. It's my playroom, uh, much discussed in the podcast and guess what, first things first, we don't have to, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna Scott Hall walk right on in here. All right, let's uh, make our way around the room. There's a lot of stuff to take in, maybe a lot of explaining to do, I don't know. Uh, first things first, this is a very important piece to me. This is a WrestleMania 6 poster, the first uh, wrestling event I ever saw. My brother, I mean, I've told the story a million times. My older brother rented the VHS tape from a mom and pop video store, brought it home. I saw, I mean, these images on the cover and was just kind of like, what is the WWF? You know, like, <laughs> kind of thing for me that just stuck with me forever. Made me the lifelong fan that I am. And uh, I just always like to have that represented, you know, like uh, the reason this all began, you know, is that event right there. So I like to keep that up there for a reminder. Um, here is my uh, modest Galoob collection. One of each character, including the UK exclusives like Big Josh and the Freebirds and Giant Gonzalez. Um, these are the 14 inch Galoobs. These are like crazy heavy if you get them out of the box. Becoming a little bit more um, difficult to, uh, to come across. I'm actually in the market for a mint uh, Psycho Sid or Sid Vicious. Uh, all these I actually bought in the package and let them breathe quite recently, so uh, I devalued them a little bit, but it doesn't matter because they're mine and they're my collection. I think they're cool. And the guy holding the camera, Small Mark Sterling, really needs that Ric Flair, I think, in his collection. That's a, that's a must. That's probably, that should be your number one right now. Uh, behind it, a uh, very old school item, the Galoob carrying case, which is just badass. I think anyone uh, who grew up, you know, in this era of Galoobs and Hasbro, you, you just recall those things. Uh, back here is a little... Hidden gem ski. Oh, so scary. Oh, okay. This is a one of 15 defining moments ultimate warrior. Uh, this represents him in the uh, 2K video game commercial. As you can see, it's unique. This is one of those side deals that Warrior cut with Mattel. Um, open back like that so you see the detailing in his duster uh, the whole explanation very very cool piece something that I uh, kicked the tires on and went you know what I gotta have that in my collection you know what I mean so not too many people in this world have a complete defining moments uh, collection I do and lastly on this shelf here is my very small AWA collection. Uh, huge Rockers fan. These, you know, Marty, Gennetti, and Shawn Michaels, they're rookie uh, figures, so that was important to me to get those. Uh, quite valuable as well. The Freebirds, I just think are cool. Uh, Bam Bam, Terry Gordy, Michael Freebird, P.S. Hayes. And then that is Nick Bockwinkle, which uh, I just, um, I think it's unique when it's like a person's only representation of him as a wrestling figure, so I felt like I needed that because I was a big Nick Bockwinkle fan. All right, moving on, uh, brand new. I just love this figure so much, I didn't want to like put it away. I wanted it in a prime spot. The Storm Collectibles Jushin Thunder Liger, he's here in front of the Popey. Uh, Japanese figures were, you know, is seemingly to be the first pro wrestling figures ever. Um, I've been trying to piece together this collection there is 10 guys. I now have eight of the 10. I'm still on the hunt for Harley Race and Hulk Hogan in good condition. Uh, Dory Funk, Terry Funk, Mil Mascara, Stan Hansen, Abdullah the Butcher, Andre the Giant, Bob Backlund, and Antonio Inoki. So, um, I mean, these, these are, I believe, 1981. So for their age, uh, they're pretty cool and hold up. Like, there's some cool little details to them. You know, like, if you look at, like, Dory Funk's chest hair and stuff, you know, pretty unique. Um, I felt like I needed those in my collection because of what they represent to wrestling figure collecting, you know. Got to uh, pay respect to the past, I guess. Uh, moving on, much talked about always in the podcast, Die Hard ECW fanboy. This is a collection I uh, re-pieced together, I guess. Um, 
over the past year to pay homage to ECW. I made this ring. This is a Anarchy Rules custom retro Mattel ring that I had done up. I put the belts here, the ECW title, and I have some of my favorites from ECW in Ruthless Aggression form slash Figures Toy Company. That's how there's like a Jerry Lynn in here. Oh, you see Blue, Blue Meanie back there. Mikey Whipwreck, of course. Shane Douglas. You know, there's a couple guys that are... Uh, actually very brand new figures so this isn't even actually all of them I have a bin with even more but uh, these are the ones that, that made the cut that I wanted to fill the ring up um, here's another one of my pride and joys these are the prototypes that I was able to uh, obtain from original San Francisco toy makers ECW figures from 20 years ago so uh, I don't I mean I've acquired all that I even know in existence it's not it's not as well known as like per se the LJN stuff or the Hasbro stuff that Zach's been collecting and you know and people around the world collect and like the information about it is plentiful and out there not so much on the ECWN this is literally everything I've ever seen and I've accumulated it all I bought this cool case on Amazon I think it's supposed to be for like a basketball but uh if it's them cool um kind of like my pride and joy like I said because these are all ideally one of ones there's an alternate head Sabu in there that was never released. There is uh, also a Bubba without glasses head that was never released. The painted Taz, the painted Sabu, and the painted RBD head, which I would, I'm to be believed, were the, the ones pictured on the back of the packaging. So to me, that's as close to cool as it gets. Uh, moving on. Uh, throughout the years, I'd say over 10 years now, I've been slowly piecing together. Japanese wrestling figures that mean something to me. Um, really went overboard. I probably doubled this collection since going to Japan this past summer and getting to perform there and stuff. It was a huge deal for me. Uh, I really embraced it and had just, you know, the time of my life. And <laughs> this the collection's kind of really exploded. It's a lot more than what it was. Uh, there's the super rare Hayabusa in the red, which now I have two. I got a Min on card. And a Lucy, who's Lucy? Um, I think it's about done. I can't, I mean, I'm always looking. I think these figures are beautiful and sometimes criminally like underrated. Like if you get the detailing on them and things like that are pretty incredible. Um, so if that's your, your bag, I think you should look into it. Hasbro carrying case. Like I said, if you kid from my era, you grew up with that. Uh, it's just a cool piece, I think. You know, uh, I know Mattel dabbles with carrying cases, but for whatever reason, it's, it's just not the same. I don't think kids even, use them like we did you know it's obviously the hashtag we want retros pick of the week the retro collection um here i've left everybody who's actually retro or flashback on display in the retro ring uh i threw up this custom uh john lucas reyes uh card back and he made of me and broski after we won the titles uh, i just think it looks cool and fills the space uh Going up the wall, this is all pretty strictly ECW. It's a signed piece, here's a uh, Hal Hanley art with the whole roster, I just got that, that's like one of my favorites. Uh, it's an event poster from, uh, I believe it's from Boston, your neck of the woods, Marky. Uh, and that is, I think, I don't think this is truly the event poster, but it's like a made up event poster of what the first ECW show event would be. It's like kind of imaginized, I believe, and that is actually signed by Superfly Jimmy Snuka. ECW middle finger, foam finger, just got it recently. And way up top here above my TV is one of each WCW San Francisco uh, hard rubber San Francisco Toy Makers figures. So I picked one of each character of my favorites. It's a very small collection, but I had those as a kid, played with them a plenty. Needed to have them now. Moving on. This is another much discussed in the podcast. The ever elusive miscellaneous shelf. Okay. Uh, which Zach Ryder says that word a lot and doesn't botch it, which is surprising now. I'm thinking about it. Up top here is miscellaneous shelf. Um, this thing is all over the place. I have, uh, you know, one, a gangrel maximum sweat because I think it's cool. I have. Uh, uh, Storm Collectibles Hollywood Hulk Hogan. I have the two figures toy company Eddie Gilbert figures because it's just just unique and really cool to me. Uh, I have an Abyss TNA figure with the chain. I have a bootleg Mannix Diesel fake Hasbro figure. Um, 
uh, the Midnight Express and Jim Cornette. I have the Hollywood Blondes back there. I have Jesse of Jesse and Festus fame because he's my buddy and I wanted uh, a figure of him in my room representing him. Uh, Maven's back there. Uh, Chris Hero and Cole Cabana from uh, Figures Toy Company. Marty the Villain, the bizarre one-off European figure that seems to be only available at high spots at the moment. Uh, so a lot of cool, unique stuff. And that is also where the... Mattel retro modern day roster guys live, including a little custom jumper of uh, Mr. WrestleMania uh, himself, Kurt Hawkins. All right, the bulk of these cases now, as we get lower, um, is Mattel's, the modern line. Uh, like I've said, uh, 10 years ago when these started, I wasn't going to collect them. I saw Elite Series 1 and was like, these are the best wrestling figures. Qual quality, you know, bone for bone, whatever. They, pound for pound. They were the best uh, wrestling figures of all time, in my opinion. They still are. Uh, so I was like, okay, I gotta keep collecting. So, and I'm glad I did because, uh, as we all know, in this, you know, secondary market, some of the value just whew, skyrockets. So I was glad to get in and be a fan from day one ish. And, uh,. It saved me a lot of money, and uh, and some of these figures are just so cool. And just if I had to, you know, go out of my way to find a lot of them, it'd be such a pain in the ass. Uh, every guy is on a ringside collectibles stand, and if they're not, then they're on the stand that they came with. Which back in the day, early, you know, year one, two, maybe three, Mattels had stands, so they're in there. Um, the organization is, is not all over the place. I try my best. This is kind of like a Attitude Era. This is kind of a Miscellaneous Era. Uh, that right side in the WCW ring is WCW. And then the left side is kind of like when I get new guys, there was room in there for a while where I was <laughs> organizing them. Uh, move on. It gets a little out of place in that ring. The Steel Cage ring, the Target exclusive has like 80s WWE guys. Then it gets a little over the place. And then these two shelves are organized by brand. So these are, uh, this is SmackDown. And I believe 205 guys I put in there. And then this side is NXT and Raw. It has a little bit more. Um, some of them have risers from uh, smalljoes.com. I think that helps and makes uh, the display a lot cooler. Uh, and then over here is the last shelf of Mattel's out of the seven that I have going here, and that is uh, the Future Endeavored shelf. You know, all my buddies, obviously I always want to have at least one action figure representation of people I wrestled or my colleagues, and then, uh, yeah, when they're not current roster guys, I move them over there. Okay, real quick, uh, here we go. The, uh, the Hasbro side of things here. Uh, Autograph, Brett the Hitman Hart, and Shawn Michaels, Rob Schamberger pieces. Uh, I mean, that's like one of my, you know, favorite moments in wrestling. Shawn winning the title for the first time, you know, the boyhood dream thing. It kind of like solidified in my mind that like I wanted to be a pro wrestler. You know, I was always a fan, but then that, I think, made it, you know, a dream for me. Um, so I really uh, fell into that and uh, never let that one go. Uh, we have the giant, uh, I believe, 12-inch talking... Hasbro's Ultimate Warrior and Hogan. I would show you they still talk, but it doesn't. It's not worth pulling the string. Hulk Hogan, Malloway in bag, uh, in a sealed case here. The uh, King of the Ring ring. Um, another hard piece has the flag, has everything. Belt's a little faded, but I'll take it. it is what it is. Uh, these are some of my favorite figures when I was a kid, and this was like deep. I was in definitely in high school playing with these, but like no shame. I loved. WCW Toy Biz figures. I thought they were just unique and fun. And uh, this is basically one of every character. Um, some guys like, you know, this Hollywood Hogan, I got, you know, the red and yellow Hogan. I made some exceptions for people, you know. I got a What Up match and I got an NWO match, you know, things like that that I uh, can make exceptions for. Some rare ones in here, like the Bash to the Beach Brett. Uh, that's more recent. The Shane Douglas, I always think is cool. That's super tough to find. Um, the Vampiro figures. So, I uh, wanted to make sure they had a cool spot because how much I like those figures. Here is the All Jan collection. I don't have to get too crazy into that, but this is where they live. Um, obviously, these are completely 
dove into in our LJN episode with Conrad Thompson. You can check that out on this channel. Um, but these were my actual LJNs that we brought to Alabama to get that shot done. Uh, one of every guy, um, including the variants that I think are count. And uh, I actually, this is breaking news, I have a bearded Corporal Kirshner on the way. So I'm done with LJNs and I'll squeeze them in here somehow. The Encore Vince, he's in a really cool case, and uh, I don't know, I just I got that years ago, and I just thought it was really cool, and um, I don't know, I had no reason to open it, and uh, I just think I think it's a unique piece, and my one and only, I don't know, you know, he's the king of wrestling, and he's overseeing all these LJNs, uh, you know, he, he cuts that first deal that makes the first ever WWE toy product, I think that's pretty cool representation, and I was like, yeah, I think it just looks nice, it fills that space. I'm big into filling space, which I can actually explain on this. The one and only actually Detolf. I know I hate to, Mark just pointed this out. You know, we talk so much about Detolfs. This is my only Detolf. Um, these other cases that you've seen are called, I think they're called Fabric Core or something like that. They're also Ikea pieces, but the big selling point to me was the lock, because I have a two and a half year old and a lot of this stuff is irreplaceable. So uh, Detolfs do have a lock, which you have to buy it separately. Whatever. I didn't make that extra step. I just got those. Here's my Detolf Hasbro Series 1 and 2. Mint condition Hasbro ring. Uh, sits perfectly on top here. I also have this checklist poster. Kind of like a... Uh, an artist took everything and pieced it together. It's not a real thing, but I think it's really cool, you know, to represent the whole line as a whole. And I have them kind of going in uh, series order down below. You know, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, you know, so 8 the red cards down in to 11, which is the green cards with the smoking guns and atom bomb and whatnot. But like I said, I like to fill the space. So I have the, the logo back there. I have the, you know, the, the old school entranceway right there. I think it helps fill the space. Really, the risers here, I mean, I think is a must have because if these are just flat, the presentation is just not there. Uh, here's one of my pride and joys. These, same thing. I put an ACW entranceway with it just to add to it. Um, this is one of each character from the ECW original San Francisco toy maker line. My be all end all favorite thing ever. These are actually mine from growing up. These are these have never been replaced. These are the real deal. Um, guys I grew up with and uh, enjoyed. Um, there's a custom Heyman in there, custom Joey Styles, and some fun things like that. But and some custom belts from a couple of the guys. Um, the ring, which is becoming very rare. So that's super important to me. And then this was not always here. And Zack Ryder, who's such a mark for himself, convinced me that I have had a pretty uh, blessed career and done some cool things, including have action figures of myself. So I don't like to put, you know, I don't like to, I wouldn't want someone to walk into this house and be a shrine to myself. I think that's a little too self-serving. So last year he talked me into it eventually. Well, these were all just in a bin and I dug them out and uh, this is one of every Kurt Hawkins action figure-esque product. And actually, there's a couple of Brian Myers figures in here as well, so. Uh, and lastly on this wall, I have the uh, Puzzle Zoo exclusive, uh, Razor Ramon and Diesel, uh, the variant colors, two pack. It was like basically the first Jax WWE exclusive. Um, just thought it was cool, just thought it was a piece that I should have in my collection. I think I explained in a very early podcast that mine always had Vader's legs on his, the Razor Ramon, he had these big fat quads and I knew it wasn't right and years later I realized that they're Vader's legs. Now I have a good defined quad on my Scott Hall, so I feel good about that. Uh, and then the brothers, Brett and Owen, two pack, limited. I just, these are just two pieces. I, I love the packaging, I love the time period and I just thought um, they would look great. Plus, when you open the door, it's kind of like, <laughs> I'm just a psycho and it fills the space. Everything is just kind of, there. Yeah. Um, so most fans of mine and of the podcast know I'm a diehard New York Mets fan. So basically um, what I've done is I've split this room kind of into two triangles. The wrestling side and the Mets side. So briefly I'll just show you. Here's my recliner where I spend, I mean the big thing is I spend a lot of time here. I relax, I chill, I watch Met games, I watch wrestling, I do all kinds of things like that. These are two recliners, cup holders, remote holders, each side is USB and phone chargers. They get almost flat. Smartmark slept here one time. 
you know, extra stuff for whatever I'm eating, whatever's going on. I don't just, you know, I wanted to spend time in this room and enjoy it unlike Zack Ryder. Woo! 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 Alright, real quick, I will just hit some of the highlights here for the people that aren't sports fans or baseball fans. I just got this from my, uh, my best friend Paul. It's kind of one of the coolest things. Uh, I am a big ballpark goer. I love to knock them off my list. I'm trying to go to every single one. I still have a couple to get to. This is actually a scratch off. And when you go to one, you know, the, all the ballparks are gray. You scratch them off when you go to them. So now I have a little bit of a hit list. My wife is not too thrilled about that. Uh, Bartolo, big sexy home run. Bobblehead, where his head bobbles and his gut jiggles. Uh, it's actually pretty exclusive and expensive. I love that piece. Uh, Buckner, when we beat the Red Sox in the World Series, 86. Ball through his legs. Starting lineups, everyone knows I'm diehard into that. City Field, my home away from home. Famous Sports Illustrated covers. One of every Mets representation in uh, McFarland Sports form. Unfortunately, that includes a Jason Bay figure. Uh, Noah Syndergaard, uh, Funko Pop. This one, my friends love to make fun of me for. This painting is of Joe McEwing that I made in high school. And uh, I used to bring it to games and wait outside the gate and try to give it to him as a gift. And I probably did that like four or five times and I never saw him to do it. It even has a note on the back to this day that says like, to Joe, you're my favorite player. Love Brian uh, and my email in there. So uh, never got to give it to him, but now I just think it's cool because I have you know up there represented next to his autograph right here. Just a random baseball player that I just absolutely adored and still do. Um, and this, this is kind of a new collection I've started that I just think is badass. Men on cards, starting lineup guys, in cases, autographs. So I have Doc Good and Keith Hernandez. Uh, Daryl Strawberry, Gardo Alfonso, and Todd Henley all autographed. So uh, those are cool pieces that I'm really proud of. And the other prime real estate that the Mets hold is right here. So these last two sh uh, shelves here fit. Um, Mike Piazza is my be-all, end-all, favorite baseball player of all time. Um, so he has everything I've ever found of him collectible besides like cards. I mean, his rookie cards back there and some cool things like that, but any anything in figure form, collectible form, takes up that shelf. And then the shelf above it is the same theme, but Mets. So there's one of every Mets starting lineup guy ever. Uh, the new modern day starting lineups, there were like stadium giveaways, like just the most random stuff. Um, you can imagine these headliners back in the day, Ray Ardonia, things like that. Um, kind of all over the place, but in the same boat, so. That's all my Mets stuff. So like I said, I like to spend time here, enjoy my collection, embrace it, sit in all its glory. And I recently added this feature, which uh, I think put everything over the top. Beautiful ambiance. Relax. You know my Mackenzie pillow I got for Christmas? And I'm good. Alright, so you would think that would be it, and I kind of wish it was because I've explained this a couple times. When I first built this playroom and I envisioned it, I said, you know what, my collection's all going to be on display. Everything that I own will be out in the open. I can enjoy it, see it every day. But I absolutely broke that rule so many times, time and time again, to the point where I have this in here. This is my closet. A lot of, uh, a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, replica championship titles of all the tag titles I've won. Um, the real craziness, this is one of every single ECW Action figures signed by the guy, except New Jack. I'll find you soon. Uh, all signed, all in ringside collectibles. Uh, you know, all in one cases. Um, these are extra for Hawkins for when I get requests or you know, friends and family. If somebody wants a figure, same here. Eight by tens, things like that. This is a book I keep of one of every Kurt Hawkins trading card ever. Just because I'm a psycho and I, if I don't have it, I'll come and I'll look through it like, 
You can see even here like printing plates and things like that that I've acquired over the years. Um, I just put them in here just because I want to. I, you know, sometimes I don't even know things exist. I just want to know and I'll fill it up. Um, this is actually one of my my new pride and joys. A couple ring jackets I keep in here because I just don't know what else to do with them. Things I've worn in the ring. I got this over the summer. Bill McKenna, eat your heart out. This is one of my favorite things I own. An authentic. Woo! Robert Steakhouse jacket. Because I'm one of the boys. Uh, what else? I, I let my wife keep toilet paper and paper towel in here. That's about it. Everything <laughs> else is just totally ransacked by me. I don't know how we're going to be able to film here. I mean, there's just uh, my, my AAA Kelly in. Mental card collection, including that Ray, you know, Ray Mysterio. Here's the podcast ring that I need accessible because I take photos for the, you know, bare minimum Brian actually takes pictures and stuff for all our social media on a regular basis. Um, this is the accessories to the Mattel guys that aren't on display. That's how many things I just don't know what to do with. It. Like, and I can't, not everything that comes with every figure can go on display. Any collector knows that. Um... Just all of it. This is, I call this the FOMO box. This has like all the figure arts guys. I just got things that I just feel like I, and, uh, some of the Storm Hogans are in there. Things that I uh, felt like I needed in my collection, but I don't really have a place for. So I just got them for maybe one day I have a bigger house or a bigger playroom. I don't know. Um, like priority mailing stuff for all the trade skis or whatever I got going on. This bin has all the TNA Toy Biz Marvel toy collection I pieced together last year. Like, there's just no place for it. So that's where it lives. Um, this is actually all Major Pod merchandise. Extra Mattel Elites that aren't on display, you know. Um, so, yeah, not too proud of this. This is my DVD collection um, from my career, and then also DVDs that, you know, I just couldn't. You know, I know nobody has DVDs anymore, but there's some things that are like irreplaceable. I still kept a lot and uh yeah bone cr uh, one of every bone crunchers in that bin one of every kurt hawkins figure ever been on cars in that bin things i feel like uh i just need to have because i'm insane and i just get action figure fomo so there you have it um it's the full that's about as much of a tour of the playroom as i can give somebody uh thanks for uh taking the time to watch this this room is literally my pride and joy my happy place um, I suggest if you're going to do something similar, get a nice recliner, get a television. Broski actually gave me this call, I don't know if anyone picked up on this. My uh, Blu-ray player and my cable box are on the floor because they were up here taking up prime real estate. I did a little wire switcheroo. <laughs> Look what's on display now. So, uh, think outside the box, enjoy it, you know, your collection is yours and there's no such thing as a bad collection unless it belongs to Sam. Roberts.